of the sight in the game can see the boxing voice. BoxerVoice.com live here with K2 promoter Tom Lawfer. So we're here at Madison Square Garden. We're in the theater to hold a media workout. We don't usually see this. I mean, uh, just so much. I mean, I've seen a, a picture of hundreds of people in the formation of Triple G. You got an Apple commercial. It's like it's happening overnight with this guy. Um, how, what's the excitement for you? It's uh, the whole promotion has been tremendous. You know, every fight, his popularity has grown. But now with this fight, where it's his first unification fight, his first pay-per-view fight, it seems like this one fight has taken it ten times to any other event that we've done. Madison Square Garden's pulled out all the stops. They have every uh, fight week event here in the theater. The open workout. We have a separate uh, press conference for Gennady. Then we have a separate press conference for the undercard, which is headlined by Chocolatito and Valoria. Brian Valoria is getting ready right now for his media workouts. And so we couldn't be more excited about, about the event. Now, for Gennady, I mean, I hate to sound like a guy that is on the bandwagon, but he, fee he seems like he's meant to be here. The way that that 24-7 or road to Golovkin Lemieux played out, you know, his, his boyish good looks, the constant smile, it almost seems uh, like he was preparing for this moment. Is it all coming natural to him? How is he taking it in? And is it going to distract him on what is billed as the biggest fight of his career? No, this is what this is what he's worked for his whole career. I mean, to get to this level, you know, his goal was to fight here at Madison Square Garden. He had two fights at the theater last year when he had a Daniel Giel fight. It was in the big arena, and this time it's a you know the arena is going to be completely sold out. It's the biggest capacity that they can hold for a boxing event. And the great thing about Gennady, every time there's a challenge in front of him, he always raises his his motivation and his game to the next level. So he always shies. He wants to put on a, a great show for the fans. And some people, you know, get a little bit intimidated by a bigger challenge or a bigger spotlight. And he, it seems to bring out the best of him. Now, obviously, he was mentioned a few times on Jim Lampley's The Fight Game on HBO. And uh, there was mention of the possibility of pay-per-view numbers. And could he do what Mayweather Berto just did, which was considered a bomb for Mayweather Berto, obviously, Mayweather being a million dollar, uh, you know, selling millions of tickets and millions of pay-per-views. But it would be good for Gennady to do a half a million. What's the expectation for you as the promoter? No, we're very conservative on the expectations. You know, uh, we had to go with pay-per-view in order to make this fight. It's two champions fighting each other. There's a lot at stake. Um, you can't take anything away from Floyd. Even with the numbers against the Berto fight, you know, he's still the pay-per-view king. I mean, when you can sell four million pay-per-views with Pacquiao, and, and he's pretty much a leader on, on all the pay-per-view sales. So you can't really take anything away from Floyd. You know, for our expectations, you know, this is Gennady's first pay-per-view fight. It's Lemieux's first pay-per-view fight. First time Chocotito is on pay-per-view and Brian Valoria. And, and neither of one of them are here from, uh, from New York. But we're, we're very excited about it. HBO keeps raising their estimates. They wouldn't have put it on, on pay-per-view on all their platforms if, if they weren't uh, supportive of the event or excited by the event. So I, I think it'll be a great uh, coming out party for Saturday. But you didn't say what you wouldn't mind it being. Uh, I, I think, uh, honestly, anything over 200,000 buys would be, uh, for us, would be great. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets close to 300,000. If it breaks 300, then it's a home run. For this type of event, um, it would be a, a tremendous thing, and, and uh, it would be a great first step for Gennady on pay-per-view. Now, as far as Gennady Golovkin's meteoric rise, it feels like he's becoming bigger than the event. Uh, the opponent doesn't really seem to matter. There's just so much behind him right now. Uh, with this win, do you think that that's the way that it would go, that Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao route where they just love him and they're going to you know, support him regardless of who's in the ring with him? I think that's really the case because uh, even though we've tried to get the best competition for, for, for Gennady, he's really carried every event, whether he was fighting here in New York, whether he was fighting StubHub at Rubio. With, uh, Rubio, he sold out the StubHub Center where he fought at the Forum against William Monroe Jr. He's really carried every promotion. Now he's in a unification fight, but it's still, I mean, this type of response, this type of, uh, these type of ticket sales and the projection for pay-per-view, that's really all centered around Gennady. Can't take anything away from David Lemieux. He had a great performance against Rosado. He dominated NGCOM, who's a world-class fighter, former champion. So it's really 
the combination of the two champions fighting each other and the perception of the two biggest punchers in the middleweight division fighting each other. My final question is, uh, obviously, you know, Gennady Golovkin, uh, he's made a mark on, on boxing, but I, I want to ask you, how do you feel as the promoter that signed him? Uh, obviously, you had to see the vision a long time ago. You did things your own way. Uh, in the world where tickets are being given away and promoters are in cold wars, you found a way to work with everyone. You found a way to make this guy a star without anyone else's hard work. You didn't find another guy to put him in a pay-per-view with. You made him a pay-per-view star on his own. So how proud are you? Oh, we're very excited about it. I'm really proud of Gennady. I mean, I did the job behind the scenes, opening the doors for him. But Gennady and Abel always came through in the ring. You know, if he didn't have 20 consecutive knockouts, if he didn't have an impressive performance every time he stepped in the ring, it wouldn't be that much buzz, that much hype, that much excitement every time he fights. I mean, we really uh, did it the hard way. We, we came to New York. We had a great reception from MSG. It took a while to convince HBO that he would be uh, someone that would draw ratings because when we first met with HBO, his English wasn't that great, and they didn't really know that much about him. But, you know, he was an undefeated middleweight champion, and we said, you know, he would fight anybody for very little money, and that's how we built him. And we built him organically with the ticket sales, both on the East Coast and the West Coast. And now we're back here at, uh, at MSG, and so this is really, uh, I'd say, his, his coming out party. Well, congratulations, and we wish you the best on Saturday night. Thanks, Nassar. I appreciate that. Thank you.